Is there an afterlife? Hate to break it to you, but uh, probably not. Life after this life ends? There probably isn't a human being who hasn't asked this question at one time or another. And here's the answer. Oh man, you're going to jump right into answering questions you have no way of actually knowing. Well, okay then, let's do it. If there is a God, there is an afterlife. It's that simple. Why would that be the case? I mean, it could be a malevolent God or an indifferent one or a type of God that's neither all good or all bad. You don't just get to proclaim it's either A or B when there are a multitude of possibilities. Some we may not even be able to comprehend. And here's why. First, this life is filled with an immeasurable amount of injustice and suffering. The only way there can be some ultimate justice for victims of evil is if there is an afterlife. And the only way comfort is available to those who suffer unjustly, from painful disease and premature death to the death of a child, is if there is an afterlife. It sounds like you just admitted that your supposed God created a system that allows for and actively endorses evil conditions. But that aside, an afterlife isn't the only comfort available to those who suffer from premature death, disease, etc. There's secular counseling services, family, friends, loved ones that can provide comfort. There's also modes of thinking about death or pain or disease that can help provide comfort when faced with suffering and death. For example, I often think of death as a nothingness. There will be no more pain or suffering. There will be no more regret. It will be like it was before I was born. I find some measure of comfort in that thought. I also find comfort in the thought that my actions while I was alive will play a role in future events, like a rock being thrown into a pool. The ripples going outward from the initial splash will shape the world around it. An act of kindness today could in theory change someone's life in a profound way, thus changing their trajectory, which in turn will affect other people that they come into contact with. And that ripple will continue long after my death. My point being, you continually talk about something that must either be one way or another, but that isn't true. But such an afterlife exists only if there is a good and just God. A good and just God provides a way to compensate for all the unjust suffering in this world. There could be an afterlife of pain and torment as well. In fact, many of your brethren believe that this is the case for people like me who don't believe in your God. I'm not sure if you believe that, Dennis, but millions do. You also wouldn't need this afterlife to balance the evil with the good if your God had created a world where suffering didn't exist in the first place. You also seem to think that the universe owes you some sort of fair and balanced treatment. The universe doesn't owe you anything. And while human beings can strive towards fairness and justice, the universe and the reality of our predicament in no way has to bend to that idea. All the wishful thinking in the world doesn't change that fact. It's better to come to grips with reality, in my opinion. This actually reminds me of a conversation I had with an ex-girlfriend once. She was a Catholic, and sometimes we'd get into stirring debates about the existence of God in the Catholic Church. During one such debate, she suddenly stopped and told me that she didn't want to continue because she preferred the bubble she lived in. She wanted to believe, and after each talk that she had with me, she found her belief waning. She preferred the comfort of her beliefs. You sound much like her, Dennis. Covering your eyes or putting your fingers in your ears doesn't change the reality of the situation. Second, since God is not physical, the physical world is not the only reality. There is also a non-physical reality. And we humans have a part of us which, being non-physical, survives the death of our body. We call it the soul. But if there is no God, this physical life is all there is. So, no God, no soul, no soul, no afterlife. You've yet to demonstrate that there is a non-material God or what part of this non-material entity produces its thoughts and actions. You've also yet to demonstrate that we have some sort of soul. I've never heard a good argument for the soul. As someone who has worked with people who have suffered brain injuries, I see no reason to believe that our personalities, our decision-making skills, and so forth have anything to do with a soul, but everything to do with our brains. What function would this soul perform? Is it just meant to survive death? And even if I granted that we had some sort of immaterial soul, why would it follow that such a thing wouldn't also suffer some sort of death when our physical bodies died? Now, of course, those who doubt God's existence have every reason to doubt an afterlife. But if you believe in a good God, then you have to believe there's an afterlife. If you say you believe in God but not in an afterlife, the God you believe in is not only not good, 
That God is cruel. That God made a world filled with unjust suffering and just left it at that. Again, so what? <laughs> you can believe in an indifferent God or a cruel one. In fact, if I were to believe in a God, that's the sort of God I'd expect to find, considering what you just said about the state of our world. There's really no evidence pointing towards an all-good God. Even your afterlife is just wishful thinking, and you have no way of confirming it. Just looking at the world around me points me in the opposite direction of a good and loving God. Now, some people who don't believe in an afterlife offer their own version of immortality. I once attended a funeral where the man officiating said, while there is no afterlife, we do live on through our good works and in the memories of loved ones. That's what a lot of people who reject an afterlife want to believe. But the idea that human beings live on through their good works or through the memories of loved ones, which generally means a person's children or grandchildren, is simply meaningless. Why would it be meaningless? It wouldn't be eternal, but that wouldn't mean it's meaningless. In fact, a bit ago you said that an afterlife was the only idea that could provide comfort, yet here you're contradicting yourself and admitting that some of the people in that service took comfort in the idea that the deceased will live on in the memories of their loved ones, and through the good works they performed while alive. You know, the idea that doesn't rest on any woo or supernatural premises. If people live on through their good works, then children who die don't live on. The number of good works most children are even capable of is minuscule. As for babies who die, well, babies can't engage in good works at all, so I guess they just don't live on. Well, no, because you conveniently left out the second part of what the funeral officiant said, which was the baby would live on in the memories of the people left behind. Like I said earlier, its existence will have a ripple effect. Anyway, the truth is that bad works usually live on longer than nearly any good works. In fact, if works make us immortal, Hitler, with all the evil he did, is far more immortal than the kindest people on earth. How about the people who fought against that evil and won? I think their legacy is far more impactful to my life than the evils the Nazi regime inflicted on the human race. The idea that evil or unethical people also have an impact on our societies might not be a comfortable one, but that doesn't change the reality of the situation. Hitler did have an impact, and most of us agree that it's not the kind of impact we want to see repeated. So we learn and try our best not to forget the lessons that the Second World War taught us. As for living on in the memories of our children, what do we say to those who have no children? Sorry, you don't live on. <sighs> that doesn't mean they wouldn't live on in the memories of other people who loved them. Moreover, living on in anyone's memory, as beautiful as that is, is not the same as immortality or an afterlife. As Woody Allen put it, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. Wishing it were true or arguing, like you are here, that you don't like the reality of the situation doesn't mean you are going to live on for eternity. And of course, living on in someone's memory isn't the same as eternal life. For starters, one is a realistic look at what's likely the outcome, and the other is wishful thinking. If there's no afterlife, we don't live on. Period. Let's be honest enough to acknowledge that. If there's no afterlife, none of us will ever again be with those we most love and who love us. If there's no afterlife, neither anyone murdered nor any murderer will ever receive ultimate justice. If there's no afterlife, this life, for the vast majority of people who ever lived and for those alive now, is a meaningless crapshoot. I wouldn't say it's meaningless. I don't think of my life as meaningless, and a lack of an eternal life doesn't change that. I find meaning in life. Making this video and hoping it touches someone's life for a few minutes gives my life a bit of meaning. Waking up and seeing my fiancé smile brings me joy, and I feel as though I have meaning. I find meaning at work, and in the hundreds of small tasks I do throughout the day. Finally, people always ask me, so what happens in the afterlife? To which I can only respond, I don't know. At least that's an honest answer. Bravo, Dennis. Bravo. But I do know this. My belief in God and the afterlife keeps me sane. The thought that this life is all there is means that torturers get away with the horrors they have engaged in. It means that this life is random and pointless. And it means that I will never again see anyone I love. 
This would drive me mad. In fact, I don't see how it wouldn't drive anyone mad who cares about suffering and who loves anyone. Don't go mad on us, Dennis. Please don't. Here's Dennis. So is there an afterlife? If there is a God, of course there is. I'm Dennis Prager. So no, there isn't. Good talk, Dennis. That's all I have today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and cheers. To forget my Bible, God is my friend. Mom is in the front seat, getting in the back seat. Gotta make our minds up, which are the screw we make. It's Sunday, Sunday, heading to church on Sunday. Everybody's looking forward to the service starting. Forward to the service, start it, worship it.